Okay, AngularOrange.io giving you a short tutorial on the Flex Layout module. The Flex Layout module contains a static API where you have directives to do all the nice things you need to do. And there's also a JavaScript API which contains this observable media um, uh, component that you can inject into your constructor and use. And that's what we're going to talk about real quick. Okay, so let's take a look at um, the code. I have a Flex Layout project. I did. Uh, I created that with Angular CLI inside of WebStorm. The scaffolding happened. Had all these uh, um, resources created, and now I'm in my app folder, and I have some components. I have three Flex components, and they're just examples. The first one is for um, the template directives. The second one is um, showing you a little bit about the JavaScript API and and the third one is is showing uh, the responsive breakpoint capability uh, but but they're all related and you should take our course which will have uh, uh, would not only go through an introduction of flex box but also show you the flex layout module and it would go through it in sections and we will cover as much as we possibly can okay so let's take a look at our app module first okay so and, and please excuse me I got little things I got things in here which are, are basically um, covering a little bit of aspect of, of all different features but um, I have this flex layout module which is imported from at angular flex layout and I basically uh, have an app comp I basically in my app module I declare my custom components, which is app component, flex one, flex two, flex three, and I import the flex layout module. Okay, now my app component, my Ruby component is basically going to just, I'm just going to be switching the tags from flex one to flex two to flex three, and, and I'll be just showing different things. So what we're going to do is look at the flex two, because that's the one that has the, the um, uh, media component in it. So let me take a let me show you what the template looks like. Um, all I'm doing is including the selector for the Flex 2 component. So I'm not using Flex 1, I'm not using Flex 3. Let's look at Flex 2. Okay, so Flex 2 um, uh, is is the is really um, the heart of what we want to talk about. And, and so let's go through it really quickly. Okay, I, I've imported the, a component, the on init and the on destroy. Uh, so, and I also in my flex2 component class, I've implemented the on init and on destroy. And basically, I've also imported the subscription and, and something called media change and observable media uh, from the flex layout. And so the first thing I do is I, I notice I have a content attribute here, which is a string inside my my um, component and and then I have this watcher which is of type subscription so in the constructor what I do is I, I inject this observable media um, uh, object uh, which 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 we're calling media and we inside the constructor we subscribe to it and maybe we should do that in the unit but but it it, it, it doesn't really um, matter um, this is such a simple example and then I what I do is with this watcher I, I subscribe to that observable media so first of all what is an observable media okay what this is going to do is it's going to f fire these events um, which tell me uh, what size uh, of the device is is viewing the application and based on that I could change my content so so basically when I subscribe to this I I get this this active media query um, uh, which it changes and when it changes what I do is I basically um, uh, get this change MQ alias value and what I do is I then check uh, uh, you know, w when I get this change, I check to see whether it's a mobile device, whether it's a large desktop device, or whether it's a medium device. And I have uh, these different uh, response sizes built into the uh, the flex layout module, right? I got XS, 
LG, MD, I got extra large, uh, um, and I got uh, small, whatever, whatever it may be. And I also have others, um, and, and we could take a look at that in our course. But, but the bottom line is you could use any of these uh, sizes. So if change.media alias is excess, then what I do is I load the mobile content. Now, my mobile content is very simple. I'm just going to um, do something very simple. I'm going to log to the console loading mobile content, and then I'm also going to define my content, this attribute in my uh, class, um, this attribute in my object instance to be mobile content. And the same goes for the, the other um, uh, uh, particular sizes. If, if, it's, if it's LG, then I'm going to load desktop content. If it's MD, I'm going to load medium content, whatever it may be. Um, so I have these functions here where I define the content to be mobile content, desktop content, medium content, and I just have this value here. And using change detection and property binding, I'm binding that to the front end so we could see what what we're talking about here. So it's um, it's a very slick little um, uh, JavaScript API to do certain things with, and you could be very precise with your device um, um, sizes. And then, of course, on on destroy, I take the watcher and I up unsubscribe, right? Um, and I'm using this uh, subscription object here. Um, re really, really, uh, you use it to uh, subscribe to an observable, and and then you unsubscribe. It doesn't really have much in it, but um, but but that's what we have. We and and then um, and then, like I said, I'm not being that careful with where I'm subscribing, etc. I just did it in a constructor real quick so I could show you a little bit. Um, and I have other functions here like is mobile, is invisible on desktop. And I'm using some of the responsive capabilities in the layout module so I can show and hide stuff. Um, so let's take a look at the, uh, the template which is up here, Flex2 component. And, um, and let's take a look at what uh, is in the template. So there's not much here. It's it's a very very trivial template, but what I do is I do have a flex container. Um, I have this uh, first of all I have this container X div tag which does some padding around around my uh, con around my uh, container that's being demoed. This is the container that's really being demoed, and this thing is a flex container. And each of these children here are flex items. And you could see that in the style sheet because uh, this particular class container uh, display type is flex. And each of, each of these divs are also flex. So, so basically, uh, I'm, laying, I'm laying out, uh, I have a flex container and flex items. And, and, and uh, so what I also do is there's some styles in the container, but I also say, well, the flex layout for smaller devices make it column layout as opposed to row layout. And I might do a gap here if I want to, uh, which might, I don't know if this is even working, but we'll take a look at that. And, uh, and then we have uh, these items here. And, and what I say with the third item is, uh, when large devices invoke this invisible, uh, uh, look at this invisible on desktop, if it returns true, then hide this item. And so I'm using some of the um, uh, flex layout module directives in the template to do what I need to do. But, um, but, but, and, and of course, the template directives are the most critical and the ones you should be learning extensively while you're looking at the example. And then I also do this div down here with some content here. And of course, this is, this is the interpolation operator, which is showing the content of the backing object instance, which is the component instance. In this case here, here it's the flex2 component instance. And, and, and I'm basically um, um, using property binding uh, Angular does property binding to display that uh, uh, by this by using this directive. So let's take a look at what my uh, let, let me see if I uh, 
Maybe I'll just show you the styles real quick. I took this out of the example on the internet, uh, out of the documentation. So there's some stuff here I'm, I'm not too crazy about, and I should clean it up a little bit. But the bottom line is I look at div and I look at container. It's flex. I look at div. Um, I look at the, the div dot container div, and that's also flex. So I got my flex container, my flex items, and I have to really identify them here. And, and I do do some padding and some some styles here which uh, which might cause me um, which might work out well or cause me some grief but let's take a look at let's take a look at the application now do I have a browser up and running um, so I have the server running already now I'm gonna just hit on uh, the browser so this is what this is what happened uh, re remember um, uh, when my when my browser size got to be a certain size uh, I I made one of the items item 3 invisible uh, I hit it right because I called the uh, uh, the invi uh, uh, invisible desktop function or whatever and it returned true and so I hid that item and then um, Um, okay, uh, no, notice I had a little bit of issue there. So, so then I resize the um, um, the uh, the container, and it it shows mobile content. Now something is not quite working. Well, let's let's take a look. Okay, yeah. So. Um, Okay, so here's here's the problem I just realized. I'm using Internet Explorer, which doesn't work as well as Chrome. Uh, the Flex Layout module um, is is it's got some level of support in the different browsers, and Google Chrome really is is really the proper uh, thing. And I don't know if this has to do with. Uh, I think I'm using default uh, emulation mode here for the view encapsulation, so I don't think that's the issue. Sometimes I display this on Google, and it displays perfectly fine. And just now you witnessed I was having some issues. But um, but anyway, um, uh, um, I just wanted to show you um, that that I could ha actually subscribe to the events associated with my with my breakpoints. Now, Flex Layout module also it it, it has um, it has a, a, a it has several different definitions of breakpoints. And uh, and I think we're, what we're doing is looking at the ones that are um, that are just like a, a, a less than or a greater than or whatever. It's it's not it's not a, r a range in between two pixel sizes. It's really um, I think this might be 500 pixels. Anything less than 500 pixels is mobile content, and then anything uh, then. Um, I might be look. Yeah, this is probably. Yeah, then I go into medium content. Um, so, so, um, and then of course, when I make a desktop content, the desktop content shows here. And of course, I hide that particular um, third item. And so, what you'll find is 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 really when you using the flex layout module, make sure you test it in Google first, because as you could see, I'm having some issues here with with the flex uh, layout module running in um, I'm running edge so uh, I should probably try to test this in all the different browsers and all the different versions etc but but the bottom line is that um, that um, it, it's 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 possible that um, I will see some issues in in Microsoft Edge right now with this module so let's go back to the uh, code and let's just um, let's go back to the code and let's just go through it once more. And we'll what we'll do is we'll we could extend it a little bit if you want to, just to see what happens. Um, let's see. So I had these functions is mobile false. Uh, invisible on desktop true 
Yeah, let's make this false first of all. And, and then go back to the demo. And notice item three is now showing. And um, okay, so so really uh, the thing, the thing I really wanted to uh, 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 try to describe to you is that you have um, different uh, uh, different breakpoints here, right? And um, you could see the list of them. Just go to the documentation, um, or or let's or let's do this. Oh, geez. So here's here's what they look like, um, and um, we've got um, these breakpoints to do whatever we need to do, and of course this isn't a documentation. You can see it. I, I just need it available and accessible at all times. Um, I have, uh, uh, it gets complicated once you introduce all of these, right? Okay, so like, for example, this one has a maximum width of, of, of 599. Uh, this one is between 600 and 959. But this one is a, a max width of, of 959. So you use whatever one you need. Um, and, and, um, and you can get as precise as you want. Now, with that said, I just want to end this the tutorial with one more thing. The other JavaScript um, additional API that's associated with uh, the Flex Layout module is um, breakpoints. And not all, and, and these breakpoints are, are very responsive, right? Because I'm using these breakpoints to write responsive code. So let's see, there's XL and there's SM. SM is between 600. Um, so let's go back. Um, let's go back to the code and see if we could do a, uh, an SM. So there's a, um, a medium. And let's do an SM here. And I'm going to say load small content. And let's say I down here I got this. I'm just gonna copy it and do load small content. And let's see if, if that takes um, um, with my um, browser here. Okay, so now we're, we're rendering the small content. We got mobile, we got small, we got medium, and we got the desktop.